Okay, what we're doing today is going to replace the brake caliper kit in the front of an 85 XR 350. Um, really, brakes don't vary that much unless you're starting to talk anti-lock braking systems. Um, anywhere from a motorbike to a car, whatever, most are pretty much the same. So you could use this, providing you've got some common sense about mechanics, you should be able to follow along quite easily and um, yeah, see if we can get any tips out of it. Yeah, one of the first jobs I'm going to do is just come and undo the top up here. I'm not going to talk to you as if you know nothing, so yeah, just undo both of these. Make sure you don't spill anything on the tank or anything when you're taking the cap off. So what you yeah, next job is to remove the caliper right from the bike altogether so it's in your hand. Okay, first, first bolt I find easiest to undo is the one with the oil line on it. That way it can be pretty firm. And don't forget you've got a rag there to catch any oil. If it's got any oil fluid in it. Because that way when if you've taken the caliper off before you do this part then it actually can be quite difficult to pop it open I'm not too worried about the oil loss or the fluid loss because you're going to put new stuff in it anyway okay Yeah, I'll just let that drip a bit and then I'm still using a 12mm spanner. I've just got to take these two part nuts off here just to get the caliper off. I've just got the finger tied at the moment. Oh, this. Yeah, take that bolt off, take that bolt off. Still dripping a bit of fluid around the place, but not too concerned about that. Just make sure you're not spilling it everywhere. Take them off. And now that caliper should just simply pull straight off. And just give it a moment to lose any fluid it's got out of it. Okay. So the, the brake pads can come out several different ways depending on which way. This one's got two bolts to go through there which hold, hold them in. Some are just spring loaded where you can just use your fingers and just pop them out. Some cars are like that. Yeah, so what we'll do is I'll undo those. Five mil Allen key. They can be a bit tight as well. Depending if you've got an air compressor available and you know what you're doing with popping the pistons out, sometimes you'd even then pop the pistons out before you undo it from the hose. I bet you'll end up with a hell of a mess there with fluids going everywhere. Okay, pop brake pads out. Try not to put oil on those because you know what happens with that. Then they'll never wear out. 
Okay, now you've got the pistons that these have to come out. So this can be a fun job if you've got no clue what you're doing. Okay, so I find the best way is uh, using an air compressor. You actually find your oil line where your oil goes into. You put the compressor air in these will pop out. But be careful, they can be dangerous. Got myself the other day with it. Okay, we just had to get some more air pressure into this compressor. Okay, and as you can see, now we've got the air pressure in there. We have the two pistons that have popped up. Okay. So what we've got to do now is set the screwdrivers in, otherwise they would have shot straight out. And if you do that in a shed that's got a lot of junk, then good luck finding them. And then hopefully with the pistons, you can sort of just wiggle them with your fingers and work them a little bit and then they pop right out just like that should have said that this part here they should have done that a long time ago that can come out as well now you can get to your pistons a lot easier and just wiggle and wiggle I can feel movement in there, so eventually they'll come out. Don't use a screwdriver and pry them out like that, otherwise you burn the sides on them and then they'll be stuffed. But as it turns out in this case, I'm putting new pistons in as well. But I'll just do it the hard way to show you that it can be done. It's just got a little cap on the top there. There we go. There you go, that's popped out. And as you can see, you've got your two seals in there that need replacing. Yes, that's where usually the oil comes out of. So what you do is you've got yourself a metal scribe. Well, I don't know where the hell mine is. A little bit shorter, but I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Okay, then you use your scriber. And just carefully pluck your old seals out like so okay obviously the longer they've been in there the harder it is going to get them out this is actually a set that i put in a couple of months ago that i was supplied the wrong set so now i've got the correct set here and redoing it okay so it'll be pretty obvious which seal goes into what spot there's a usually a thick seal and a thin seal okay the next thing you got your dry that up a little bit okay you got your, your two grooves in here that the seals usually sit in with the scriber go around and clean them out clean them out thoroughly because the better job you'll do it means you're not going to have to pop it all open again and redo your seals because they're still leaking so this is the part that you spend quite a bit of time on and make sure there's any corrosion any stuck seal on there that you can get it all out use the bent side to get to the top edge 
but as I said I did this a couple of months ago so I cleaned it all out then oh, don't forget to get your parts or carby cleaner or whatever Usually. give it a good clean out so you don't have any stray parts in there anything that's going to get caught in the seals and stuff them up give that a good wiping out find the parts clean it will dry off pretty quick anyway okay and then usually if um if it's an older rebuild from an older one which I've already done then you get yourself some extremely fine wet and dry and give a bit of a honing inside these cylinders here making sure that there's no burrs or anything no corrosion, no burrs, anything that could stuff your new seals. As I said, I'm not going to treat you like an idiot, so you should have some clue of what you're doing there anyway. So, okay, so get the old the new kit. Man, I reckon they should supply scissors with every single bubble wrap that they do. Oh, what I also have got as well is just got a small measuring cup. I'm not measuring anything in particular, but it's got a small end there, which is good for doing the fill. But what I'll do is I'll just pop a little bit of this brake fluid I got. You don't want to go grabbing the wrong fluid out of the shed. No problem if you fill it full of lighter fluid or something. Okay. Let's get that. First thing we'll do is get the seals out. And as I said, pretty self explanatory. There's two small seals, there's two large seals. So that's pretty easy. I'm just going to dab a little bit of fluid on my finger just to give it a bit of a coating. That's actually supplied some assembly grease with this one. So, okay, might as well do it properly. A little bit of assembly grease. Just a little bit on the finger. You don't need a huge amount. Just enough to make sure that the seal is basically wet. And then pop that down into the groove. Sometimes this can get a little bit of stuffing around just to get them back in because they, they seem like they're too big for the hole. Just be patient because you don't want to go splitting the seal either. That's the thing, there we go. Hold your tongue right, have a little bit of patience and the seal goes in perfectly. Okay, same with the next one. Somebody grease around there. On this particular model, I don't think I've even ever come across any calipers in my life that have had different left and rights. You'll get some calipers which are single piston. Majority of them are dual piston or twin piston, whatever they want to call it. Let's see what goes down to the hole a little bit. And there we go. And that's popped in and it feels perfect. Okay. Now the smaller seal. Obviously, work your bottom one first that way you're not working over the top of your smaller seal and for your fairies out there that wear your diamond rings or whatever while you're doing this you're not gonna damage the seal while you're poking your finger in there okay so this is where the patience comes into it
And if you haven't cleaned this groove out correctly, when you run your finger around the seal, you'll actually feel a bump in it. And that'll be no good. You have to. Because as, as you put them in, you run your finger around them like that just to make sure they're, they're seated and they feel good. So basically, this is a job that requires perfection and nothing less. So as you can imagine, if your brakes fail, who knows what the end result's going to be. And if you take shortcuts with your cleaning of your seals, it'll stuff your seals, your brakes will leak, and then you'll have no brakes. And if you've put it all in and you think something doesn't feel right, then it's probably not. Like this one here that's not feeling right to me at the moment, simply because I can see, physically see that the seal's twisted as it's just gone in. And it's bumpy and it's twisted and everything else, so I'm not going to say that'll do. I'll actually just get that in there and carefully just pop that out again so obviously you don't want to damage the seal while you're doing that that's going to cook it again still not happy with the way it's going in I'm going to rip it straight back out and do it again. Yeah, let's have a look at that part that I had a problem with a minute ago. Seems to be going in better this time. There you go. And it did have a twist in it just then as well, but it's now perfect. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more grease on there. Okay, now it's time to put the pistons in. Okay. Despite how you saw the other ones come out, you would think logically to put the hole in. No, that's not correct. Actually put the bottom of the cup into the hole first. Make sure it pops it in straight. And look at that. It just basically slides in. No effort at all. And it felt really, really good as well. So therefore, that's telling me that that's a perfect fit. A little bit more grease around that one. There should be a little bit of resistance with that, but not a hell of a lot. Because obviously you've got to go through a couple of seals. And there we go, it's popped in. See how easy that popped in there? Piece of cake. Okay, so now what we can do is... You've got two, two rubbers here as well, which come in the kit. Um, but as I said, I just replaced them a couple of months ago, so I'm not going to replace them again. It's a bit pointless. So that can go back on there. This is actually your mounting bracket. This part is stable on the bike while this part moves. A little bit of grease. Just put these 